Hello everyone, the Indie Maniac here, and today I'm going to be reacting to an indie game event that just recently ended called the Day of the Devs. This event usually coincides with the Game Awards, which is in fact tomorrow as of the recording of this video, or Thursday, December 7th, for those of you watching this video whenever it is uploaded, either on the 6th or the 7th. And after the Day of the Devs, there's also another gaming event that I'd like to react to called the Wholesome Snack. So as far as indie games go, this should be a lot of news coming at you really quickly. It seems like they're an hour each, so they're a little longer than subsequent events that I've reacted to. So that's either because there's going to be a little more talking about each individual game, or there's going to be more games, which I highly doubt because the last event I watched had like over 100 games. I think it was 113. Hopefully I find some new games that I haven't seen before but I'm assuming there's going to be some overlap from previous indie game events. I mean, how couldn't there be? So without me talking too much more, let's get right into the event. See, this video is about two hours long, but there is about a 30 minute window for the starting time. So let's just see how long Day of the Devs is. And then after that, I will do a separate video for the wholesome snack. How loud is this? I think we're good. Hello, and welcome to the Day of the Devs Digital Showcase. Day of the Devs is a game Hello, festival Tim focused on independent games, the devs who make them, and the people also, who Also, I put subtitles on been in case you guys want to read what they're saying while I'm talking over them because I'm really obnoxious and I talk louder than they are. Why am I wearing this fancy jacket? Well, that's easy. That's because Day of the Devs is gone. Hollywood. You do have a fancy right. jacket on. A brand new show to our lineup, a live show in Los Angeles to coincide with Jeff Keighley's Game Awards celebration. It's going to be downtown LA, December 8th, from 2 to 8 p.m. We're going to have over 50 games. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. We're going to I have wish drinks, I could go to the physical event, free. but it's in LA, ages, and I'm on the so other side of the country. That'd be really cool to go to, honestly. To the link that's but again, here. not in LA. I'm in... But if you can't come I'm on the other coast, we have I'm a on digital the opposite right side of the country from this right event. Now. So just sit back and relax, open your entertainment holes, and allow a tingling sensation to flow over your scalp, down your back. I'm opening my holes, right. don't Whole worry. Your body as you receive this interactive cornucopia. My body's ready, Tim Shaver, don't worry. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get started, our pals at Kepler Interactive have given us a bunch of Steam codes, and we've hidden them throughout the broadcast. So if you're eagle-eyed and you freeze uh -oh. frame at the right moment, you might... Too bad I didn't watch this live. I like could have seafood, possibly gotten some uh, some quest to games. Two, Even GM, though there are people out there that literally so, go to these events yeah. looking for those, so I right, doubt so. I would have gotten anything. There's people that are really quick at getting those, honestly. From developer Tallboys, Not So Tall Near boys. is a first-person runaway simulator. A runaway simulator? A Never heard that. I've heard of a walking sim, but not a runaway sim. Yo, tall boys here. Milsonier is a boys. person Kafkaesque immersive sim. Okay. Are you running away from that giant? Because that looks terrifying. You're an ordinary no one. Procrastinate on anything not pursue. Let alone a crime. Must be a mistake. Oh my god. Yet, <laughs> Look at him looking at you. Right. Look at those, that face. The expression on his face was hilarious. He's like... Oh god. That looks like a super zoomed in picture that... It's like, whoop, just right in your face. It looks hilarious. Like and live as fast as possible. But be wary. Every move you make is being followed by a giant policeman. Why? Wow, God, that is so creepy. Why is he looking at you like that? Why is there a giant policeman? Do they explain that in the game? Give me a reason to be friends. So you can be friends with it. Or him. The giant. Have a Tamagotchi like moon system. Play with it. Toll, give gift. Smash their stuff. You can even befriend a giant. Everything is on the table. This sounds interesting. I would probably play this just for the sheer fact of never see seeing a game like this before, honestly. Like, I don't think I've ever heard of anything like this. It's basically like a dating sim, where instead of a romantic relationship, you can go to jail. That's a weird way to put that. It's like a dating sim. Because, you know, you're trying to befriend the giant. Oh my god. From the start, there are many escape routes waiting to explore. 
time is a key. I didn't know they would have subtitles of their own, and I put mine on in the YouTube video. So, like, sorry about that. They're overlapping now. How dare they want to put subtitles? Brick. Okay, so this event is already different. They're showing a lot more of one game at a time. As opposed to that other event I watched where it was like, game, 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 game. You have questions? Well, fuck that. Game, 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 game. Restricted area unless he's happy. That's interesting. You already have me sold on this game because it's very unique. Like, I want to play this. Oh. Oh, no. Run. Run. Don't get vored by the giant. That would not be fun. He's like, where are you at? Where are you at? This is disrupting my sleep. Mason is an officer sleep. My calls him to fall asleep during the day. We dip into the weapon and don't have a release date yet. Ah, no release date yet. God, why? Why? What's with that face? What is with that face? That was a jump scare. But you can wish this our game on Steam and learn more about it on our Twitter and YouTube. I will definitely wishlist this one. This is very interesting. <laughs> oh, look out! Giant hand! Look out for the giant hand! <gasps> and, oh god. Oh god. That is terrifying. Hi. Could this all almost be considered a horror game because you're running away from a giant well you're trying to not make the giant mad wishlist now on steam i definitely will i'm very interested in this one in these chilly fall and winter months there's nothing quite like a nice hot cup of tea but you know what's even better serving up a warm mug to someone who needs it look forward to uncovering mysteries and defining your witching style in this world premiere World Hi, premiere. I'm Tanya, the captain of Kit Fox Games. Hi, Tanya. Hello, um, I'm Charlie. I'm a programmer on Loose Leaf. So Hi, I do Charlie. All things code. Today, I know Kit Fox I'm Games. Show you a I see them game on Twitter. We've been working on since Boyfriend Dungeon, called Loose Leaf. I really liked Boyfriend Dungeon, by the way. That was a really fun game. Loose Leaf. Okay. Oh, is this going to be making tea? They did bring up tea earlier. In Loose Leaf, you manage a tea room with the most in-depth yep, tea brewing tea. simulation ever. You it's control the temperature, the timing, the ingredients, sim. and serving to try to make the best tea you can for your troubled guests. I don't and know how I would feel about this type of game. Journal. We I'm gonna be honest, this does not seem very up my alley, feel, but it's definitely for some people. cups around feel good? Can you clack things together? Looks Figuring like this would be good in VR, honestly. Perfect brew will honestly. take careful experimentation and exploration as you unlock new ingredients, tools, and discover new recipes. It's kind of like coffee talk, but with tea, honestly. I like coffee talk too, so if you get to have that rapport with the customers, I think it would be cool. Because all good things take time. So we're really encouraging people to be exploratory, to be a little playful in their tea brewing process. Hold on one second. Say hello. But it's not just about tea brewing. It's also about the social relationships that you develop over time. You're a witch, so you're going to be doing carol ah, card reading for them. you're a them. witch. Get to know it them. Seems to be a common thing now. And help them make sense of their problems. And you do and get anxieties. to make relationships with your customers, which is kind of like coffee talk, which I like. Is that those tar tarot tarot cards? The world can Tar be a dark place, and there are so many things right now to be afraid of. But in this world, maybe monsters would like a cup of tea too. Those cups of tea look really good, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. Loose leaf. You know what? It's kind of wholesome. Wishless loose leaf. If you're ready to become a tea witch, I might try it. Honestly. This next game. It's from a studio in Yorkshire, England, called Cold Supper, and published by our good pals at Panic. 
This colourful cartoon comedy caper is stuffed full of your favourite British regional accents, and it's claimed itself the genre of slapformer. Slap its name form? is how I feel about the game itself, and soon you'll be exclaiming it too. This is Thank Goodness You're Here. Thank goodness you're here. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Will. And Hi, James and Will. Thank goodness you're here. I like the art style. I think I get it. What kind of game is this, though? It's like an adventure game? Question mark? Or is this point and click? Oh, no, he's moving freely. Adventure. The game takes place in Barnsworth, a surreal and imagined version of a hometown in the north of England. You play as a salesman who arrives in town for a meeting with the mayor, but you're very early. With all this time to kill, what will you get up to? You know what? I think I'd play this one. What have we got here then? So far I've liked all the games. Don't worry little fella, I'll pop you down the apples and pears in a jiffy. Ooh, that looks painful. <laughs> you explore the town and meet many strange inhabitants and help out with a series of increasingly odd jobs. What? Oh, thank goodness you're here. Sorry, no pies. With no meat. I can't make a pie without meat. He needs meat for his meat pies. I was trying to read that box, but it went. I didn't notice it until they were gone already. Why are you so small to compared to the other? Look at that ass. Jeez. A lot of definition on that guy's ass. I don't know why. Uh, I'm trying to read the signs. Slow down. Characterful hand-drawn animation. To voice their authentic regional dialogue, we work with some very funny comedians. Sam's hams. Yeah, look. Oh, you're messing about with that thing, are you? There's plenty to do and see in Barnsworth, so be sure to wishlist and join us in 2024 when it's out on computers and consoles. Why? Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank, uh, thank goodness you're here. Yeah. Arriving 2024. Uh, everything except Xbox. Up next, we have a world premiere from Pop Cannibal. Ooh, this world premiere. Awesome. I like those. Here it is. Hi. I'm Zyba. Hi, Zyba. And I'm Luigi. Hi, we Luigi. We are Pop Cannibal, along with Clark, who makes some really good music. We made a game called Kind Words, Lo-Fi Chill Beats to Write To. That sounds so we relaxing. Nice letters to people. You write what is stressing you or worrying you, you share it online, and people write you nice replies. For four years, every day, people have been writing thousands and thousands of letters. They're bringing more of themselves to the game than we expected. They are writing dreams, making media requests, and poetry. Um, and so we're making that game. So you just might, we're gonna make you a just game like write for letters? All of these things we love to talk about. If you haven't guessed it already, we're making Kind Words 2. Oh, it's a sequel. Okay. I didn't know there was even a first one. Lo fi, uh, Kind Words 2 Lo Fi City Pop. So I'll, I'll look up the first one. I want to hug. So you write letters. Who do they go to? my question we really wanted to take what was luna's getting really crazy right now original kind words and expand on every piece and try and find all the ways people can share and communicate with each other okay so oh you can decorate speak, i saw that uh, we're gonna let the player break out of the confines of the room they were uh sitting in in the original kind words and there's this whole city where we have all these new activities. So you get to explore the world and write the letters now instead of just being in the room. That's kind of cool. It sounds very wholesome. Maybe it should have been in the wholesome one, too. Share your wishes on the night sky. There's two wholesome games so far. I wonder if I'll see them again in the wholesome event after this. Conversations with everybody that you see in the streets. Do you like the music, Luna? Calm down. Redax. Making virtual places that map to all these desires to communicate that we know people have. I could always use an app. I, I relate. Right. People were drawn to kind words because it offered something real. It was a space where people felt comfortable sharing some deep-seated insecurity. Or that's that that's really cute. That's adorable. 
so much in our society pushes people to the boundaries and a lot of people are feeling facts right now facts and just being able to feel like you've had your voice heard especially like with random strangers on the internet it's wiggling just void to feel some amount of warmth ah so poop it's, <laughs> it's awesome. there's no liking there's i no felt that you don't worry about quantitative feedback. You're not trying to be popular. We're making a game where you can come and be yourself and talk about what you care about and be good to other people. You know, sometimes it really is hard to be yourself because you feel like people are judging you. I like this game. I'll play it. I have to check out the Skyward's first one, though. Two. The Steam page is live now. Go wishlist it. And sign up for the playtest. I will Goodbye. wishlist it. Goodbye. Kind words, too. All right, hold on. This one's getting a little crazy. I'm going to go put her back real quick. It'll just be me again. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. So that was like four games so far, and I liked British all of them. British developers Ricky Haggett and Dick Hogg have an extensive history of working together on incredible games like Dick I Am Hogg. Dead and Wilmot's Warehouse. Their next game, Flock, is don't cut laugh, from don't a similar laugh, cloth don't laugh, don't from laugh, my personal favorite game don't of laugh, theirs, Don't Laugh. Flock is a multiplayer co-op game that has you teaming up with a friend to fly on the back of a bird, explore beautiful landscapes, and collect little creatures to join your herd. Co-op game. Flock. Hi, I'm Richard Hogg. And I'm Ricky Haggard. We're here to introduce Flock, the game we've been working on. This sweater looks so comfy. I'm not gonna lie. This looks like another wholesome game. Look at Day of the Devs taking all the wholesome games from wholesome games. Ah, oh, this looks so relaxing. I'm not gonna lie. What the heck are those? I love how this. Uh, <laughs> the subtitles were like, A? That's what they said, right? A? I'm digging the art style too, it looks very cutesy. Flock is a game where you explore a vibrant natural landscape from the yeah. back of a giant bird, discovering wild creatures How is this co -op? and charming them into a big flock, which you can play solo or multiplayer. Multiplayer, so mul not just two people? More? The player's bird sings to the wild creatures to charm them. Is it, do we help each other in multiplayer? position themselves not too close or too far away. Or are we trying to get a bigger flock and we're competing in multiplayer? I'm kind of curious about that. Some creatures try to hide from the player. Ah, oh, this looks so beautiful. I just heard something in here. And the music is so calming. There it is. What, what, where? That? That's a thing? That's a creature? In Flock, you play as a kind of naturalist. When you discover a new creature, Where? you have to work out what it is and categorize it. Is it... is that a thing? It kind of just like a plant. Oh, we've just discovered a new family, the Rustics. But which Rustic is it? Yeah, this one. Oh, it hides in... okay, it's camouflaged in a cup. That's why it doesn't look like anything. The creature That's actually is one of the ways like. you can track your progress in Flock. It shows you which creatures you've identified which you've managed to charm, and it can give you clues for the ones you haven't found yet. God, just Players every game I've seen so far, I just want they to play. leave them in meadows to graze, and over time their sheep will provide wool for making clothes. Oh yeah. As well as revealing secrets hidden in the meadows. Can you name them? It looks like you named them. Or Most of they? the creatures in flock can know. only be found in particular habitats that they're adapted to. I like that guy on the top. Let's charm one. Okay, okay. Are you going to show any of the multiplayer? I'm curious about that part, honestly. Charmed. Also, I like the birdies flying on. It looks cute. Ah, uh, we're on the trail of one of the rarer creatures here. Ah, here it is. Okay, let's identify it. Which family? Yeah, it's definitely a piper. Pipers? Cosmets? Which one? Ooh, I was reading those. What if ah, you get it wrong? Western Super Piper. What happens if you get it wrong? That's right. Okay. 
He hasn't got one wrong yet, so what happens if you get one wrong? That's my Thanks for question. Watching. We hope you'll enjoy exploring the wild world of Flock and discovering all its creatures when it comes out spring 2024. All right, 2024, spring. I'm ready for this one. I'm ready for all these games. Just give me them all, honestly. I'll play them. I will play every single one of these games. Also, I haven't been looking for those, like... They said at the beginning there was, like, oh, every Xbox Game Pass. Okay, cool. Truffle-flavored snacks are all the rage these days. Maybe you saw that Nicolas Cage movie, Pigs. But there's never been a mushroom infused... Remember at the beginning of this where they were, like, there's gonna be Steam codes if you look really close. I haven't seen any, but I haven't been looking too close. ...are bringing us Hermit and Pig, and it's awesome. <gasps> Hermit and Pig, I played this. I played this game. I made a Let's Play of this game. Great game. Go play it when they have an open demo. The demo I played was not open to everyone. It was a closed beta. I played it, recorded gameplay, love the game. Can't wait for this game. Can't praise it enough. The devs are doing great work here. If they're watching this video, you're doing a great job. I'm already sold on this one, so I don't really need to see much more. Already about 50 minutes in, but that's with the weird, like, hiatus in the beginning where they're like, oh, we're starting this stream early because 30 Hi, minutes. Hi, I'm Nathan. And I'm Mason. Hi, Nathan we're and Heavy Mason. We're Lunch Studio, and we're working on our first game, Hermit and Pig. Oh, this is their it's first game, too, and it's good. RPG, it's a really good game. Old man and his truck it's a very fun turn-based RPG. I uh, said that again like because I talked over him when he said it. Forage mushrooms and truffles. And you look for mushrooms. Avoid talking to people. Basically the dream. <laughs> Basically the dream, avoiding talking to people, I feel that. But one morning, their solitude is disrupted. When a hungry villager shows up on their front porch, Hermit and Pig reluctantly agree to search for a giant edible mushroom of lettuce. Oh, look out! The Jumbo Fungo. The, the Jumbo, jumbo fungo. fungo. won't be a smooth one. Hermit and Pig's combat pulls from Earthbound, Pokemon, Paper Mario, and even games like Street Fighter. I could tell. It's a frantic mix that rewards quick thinking. The player first has I don't have quick thinking skills, so I got fucked up a lot. Against the enemy. Like, can you punch a cockroach? Nah, you can't punch a cockroach. Yeah, you gotta stomp, you gotta stomp on it. Obviously. For sure. Obvious. Then they'll use a key combo from Look the at him, he's like, to execute the attack before the turn timer runs. The enemy's really just sitting we there like... to make a battle system that emphasizes player growth rather than experience points. But don't get too comfortable. You'll need to learn more complex attacks... I love the animations when they get hit, they just go... The game goes on. Talking with other characters is equally intense. If you're socially... Adapted, I didn't meet this guy, I don't think. clearly are. You'll be able to avoid cringe damage. That's easier Cringe said than damage. Done. When you're a hermit, talking to some random dude is about as stressful as a bear attack. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh. You'll also grow to become a certified mushroom genius. No, that's not true. Is that a but botanist? I forget. Mushrooms and truffles. What is it when you're uses, professional in? Uses is it horticulture? And when you're professional in like them plants, them. is that horticulture? Botany? I forget. In Herman and Pig, you'll get to explore, forage, battle, and investigate the strange and deadly mystery that upends Hermit and Pig's world. We hope you enjoy. I did enjoy the closed beta of the game. Go wishlist this one, it's great. This next one comes from a solo developer, and it's a completely wild, very unexpected, really crazy game, or is it a game? Judge for yourself. Is it a game? What do you mean? You're really hyping this one Yo, up. Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Kobe South Joe. Hi. And I'm Are a, a low-level slime okay. that works under the studio name Kobe Soft Co. I'm the creator of Dome King Cabbage. Dome King Cabbage. Okay. I'm listening. A visual novel. Okay. Uh, you have to really get me... You really have to get me in with visual novels. Hopefully you can still... What the hell is going on? I had to turn that down. It was, this is really loud music. Hopefully you can still hear me over it. 
Dome King Cabbage is a short visual novel set in the world of a monster collecting RPG. Okay, you kind of have my interest. You really have to get me in with visual novels, though. I'm not usually into those. So it does sound interesting. Okay, can you, you can move freely? Okay. They also said it was a short game. I like those. Sometimes. Can't always play all these long games, you know? Not every game needs to be 100 plus hours. I've been solo developing this game for a while. How I long? I conceived of the game a few years ago when I taught English in Osaka, Japan, and I would just sit at my desk what and the daydream heck? about this weird project when I should have probably been working. It was like an basically. acid trip. I would get so stressed out teaching these kids that in between classes I would lie down in the school's dark storage room next to a little model of the solar system and scattered flashcards and my body would kind of just shut down. It was a sad sight. I used a bag wow. of liquid detergent as a makeshift pillow That's so my head wouldn't crazy, slam man. on the concrete floor and I would stare at the ceiling imagining scenes I wanted to make for Dumb King Cabbage while listening to the game soundtrack pipe out of my tiny, tinny phone speakers. Sounds like you put a lot of work into this while also having a full-time job. I can appreciate that. I do the same thing with my content. Just run myself into the ground. Don't I'm don't do so that. Thankful. It's not it's not good. I'm not in that position. I don't recommend anymore. it. And with the help but of I do my do publisher it. Hyper Real, I've been making my dream game as a full-time job. Nice. Um, full-time job now making games. That's awesome. Level 3 all day. This looks so good. I'm not gonna lie. I've said that about literally every game so far. Like, I want to play all of these games. And it's a big problem, because my wallet is screaming. I thought you said it was a visual novel. It looks like you're fighting. Because <sighs> usually visual Anyways, novels are just I know it's cliche, mostly talking. You're in an awful place. Just have a vision and follow it and you can claw your way out. I'll s Hold on one second. Still be a while before I'm done with Dumb King Cabbage, but... That's to be expected from a solo developer. I hope that it ends up inspiring you to make what you want someday. Thanks to Double Fine and I am 8-Bit for including me in Damn the Devs. Until next time, peace. I'm going to be honest, stories like these really do motivate me. Motivate me to do more with my content because there are people that are one person. They make these crazy games and I am one person trying to make my content. You know, I don't have a video editor. I don't have anyone helping me. It's just me. And I love hearing these stories where people succeed at it. You know, it gives me hope that I can do so as well. So good for you. Good for you, man. I'll play your game. I'm gonna wishlist all these games after this stream. Dome King when Cabbage. I first saw Ultros, I was blown away by its striking, colorful art style. This explosion of psychedelic color should be expected, coming from artist and musician El Huervo, most known for his work on Else Heartbreak and Hotline Miami. Hotline but Miami, I know that one. exterior comes a super deep Metroidvania with tight combat and tons of secrets. This is the first Metroidvania they've Ultros. shown, and I appreciate that Greetings, because there was a time Astros. where that I was just very prevalent. Hunt. There was just Metroidvania after Metroidvania, and it's, it's good. There's a little bit of a break from it. There's still games in the genre like this one. This looks beautiful, by the way, but... <laughs> There was a lot at one point, like a lot. For there was once an empty potential about to be birthed. This game looks very visually beautiful, like very stunning. Was greeted by short sightedness, although nigh honestly covetous, nor completely barren. It swallowed up everything that was given. I'd play this. I'm not a big Metroidvania guy, but Welcome I love the art style here. This looks so beautiful. 
My god. A cosmic uterus where every realm offers outlandish like, what? beauty. Did I hear that right? And read You'll it right? You wake up without any trace of how you got there. The tanto you carry may knell a rhythmic hum, but the extractor would be the main tool for exploring and interacting with your surroundings. This is the trimmer program. Okay. Now, we're trying out the extractor's thruster mode to move cool. around the rotten orchard. Definitely a few unique Indulging in gardening aspects is integral to this. When unearthing the secrets of the sarcophagus. Why are you planning You'll a come across an abundance tree? of seeds, and tending to the plant life will grant you new paths and means to unlock new skills. Okay. That's nutritional values are accumulated by eating. Different kinds of food are rich in different ways. I too want to eat different kinds of food, I feel that. To unlock memories of movement, gardening, or combat. There's the skill tree. Naturally, all creatures have their own place in the sarcophagus's ecosystem. By tending to the diverse environments, you'll change how you interact with the world. That is kind of unique. I will give it that. It goes without saying that you need to be careful oh. and respect nature. Yeah, look out for that. That uh, looks like it's hungry. The further and you to explore, you. the more exotic creatures you'll come across. Ooh, jeez! Look out! That looks this terrifying. New ways of handling yourself while dancing with death. In our intimate combat, observing attack patterns is of essence. Proving yourself to Vasa is hard, so you better make good use of all the moves you learned so far. How does one break the cycle to deliver the demon? Is that the boss? The this last boss? Is Ultras. Alright, it's available on everything except Xbox again. Seems to be a very common theme. Our next game describes itself as a psychological survival horror game set in an eerie 90s Polish Okay, town. survival it's horror. I like places. it, I like it. It's got an absolutely gorgeous and unsettling visual style and a world of unfathomable monstrosities that will challenge your very sanity to behold. So far I haven't seen any overlapping games. Sonaka, this is Holston. Dzień dobry. I'm Rafał Sankowski, the game director at Sonika. Hi. I'm in a room that some of you might recognize from the first demo of our upcoming game. Holsten is I a don't psychological recognize it, I'm sorry to say, buddy. set in the 90s Poland. And in Holsten, it's all about changing perspective. But now I will. I'll recognize it now. Holsten. That looks so cool! Okay, hold on. Do that again. It looked like Jak it went sytuacja? from top down to like when you aim down your Jest sight, it goes like nie ma prądu. Nie first person. I like this game. So far, liked all the games. In the context of survival horror, we wanted to put a spotlight on a new setting. Change of perspective, if you will. A new setting? It's because not many games take place in this setting? Poland in the 90s Poland? is where we mostly grew up. And we are so excited to show you our everyday lives of the past. All that post-communism, religious influence, oh. or skeletons in the closet. Okay. The second perspective change is much less metaphorical. You can, well, rotate the camera. Every single object on the screen was drawn in pixel art. And I want to see him like zoom in so to that fire our the gun again. In house to XD rendering tech can provide you lights, shadows, lightning strikes. The and, hell are those you know, things? All the modern graphics stuff. He turned on the lights and they just the receded into the change. earth or hell where they came from. During combat, when aiming, 
the camera goes from an isometric into an over-the-shoulder perspective. Yep, there it is. That's awesome. I love that. I'm all about that. Okay, so it's more over-the-shoulder first-person really, kind of view. We think that is the best of both worlds. Yeah, see, it's over-the-shoulder. I mean third person, sorry. I've been saying first, the it's third person. Beautiful pixel art or that over the so shoulder puzzles, third person view. I don't know why I said first person. And then, when you need to fight, you can get close, right into the action. It looks like you're playing as Leon because of the jacket. You can do headshots. Looks like you're playing as Leon you can from Resident Evil 4. And shoot off specific body parts. Ah, God. This looks amazing. There's so much more of stuff to cover. From Metroidvania based semi open world town of Yzerna Colonia to bosses that throw delivery trucks at you. From a down to earth story about corruption and public health care to ooze covered zombie cows. I invite you to join us on our journey of creating the game of our dreams. Follow us on Steam for updates, play to demos available now or wait <gasps> until 2020 demo. to play a third demo and explore the town of Vizierna Colonia in Holstein. Demo. Let us change your perspective. You said the but magic word. Holstein. Now. I'm going to play the shit out of this game. Coming to everything. Look at that. Play the demo on Steam. I'm going to do that after this probably. Next stop from a two-person team out of Germany is a musical, tinkery... Toy box, exploration toy box exploration this game. This is Oda oh, Da. Oh, da, da. Hey there. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Matilda. Hi. And I love curious sounds and musical concepts. I'm Sven. I like to make uh, machines and other pretty stuff. Together, we are creating a music making roguelite game called Oda oh, da, da. That looks so fucking beautiful. How, how does this work? In Odada, you experiment with musical machines. Now this, I would try, but I'd probably do terrible at it, to be honest. Your unique music snippet. Every new playthrough will give you a randomized set of levels and instruments to use. I'm digging the art styles there. Oh, look at their mouths. I'm digging the different art styles in all these games. They're all very unique. You can and combine music snippets on your journey and save your memories onto a cassette. As you progress through the game, you will unlock more and more content for Odada. New levels, instruments, and machines. You know what? And with the unlocked wagons, you can That's very unique. the feeling of each level quite a lot. I just don't know how well I'd do at this game, honestly. Like I said, like, I feel like I'd fumble a lot. Ooh, da da. Oh, da da. Look, the name of the game is right there. Unlike the last event I watched, this is going in Odada, really in depth with some of these you can games. Customize your cassette. I've watched Day of the Devs you before, and this is very commonplace for this. They like to show off a lot of these games creations with others and go further into them. And grow a never-ending cassette collection. Look at all those cassettes! Remember when cassettes were a thing? Anyone? Anyone? Like VHS tapes? Odada is coming out in 2024. Uh, there are still more levels, collectibles, it's coming out in 2024. We're looking forward to sharing our progress with you on Discord and also looking forward to hearing your songs. 
Bye-bye. Bye. You I'll wish list that one. You thought was a failed quest, only to find yourself in a dark environment, being ordered around by a creepy figure with glowing eyes and a surprisingly sultry voice. Travel through a strange environment, meet quirky characters, figure out your powers, and don't type anything too weird, okay? Actually, definitely do. I want to see what happens. Hi, I'm Paul Hart. I'm the programmer, artist, and co-designer for Cryptmaster, a word-based dungeon crawling nostalgic word puzzle based RPG. dungeon we crawling nostalgia puzzle RPG. Williams, writer and co-designer of Crypt that was a mouthful as paul said Cryptmaster is a wbdcnp rpg now that's a genre we've always wanted to explore a wbdcnp rpg within the indie space so oh, shut it you oafs in the indie space what does that even mean I'll take it from here. That's kind of cool. How does this work? Cryptmaster is my game. Cryptmaster is a game about the struggles of a dashing necromancer forced to rely on a gaggle of dim-witted revenants. That's you, the players, as he strives to achieve his full potential. It deals with a range of pressing societal issues, including mildew, rat infestation, and weaponized blasphemy. The What's with the making of the words of part? Master okay, here you go. Is simple enough, but let me spell it out. I get you it. You help me to guess the names of items found in chests throughout the Underland. Next... You use the letters from these remembered words to regain the skills you knew in life. Okay, okay. Then you use these skills Hit. to defeat a range of vicious enemies. In addition... So what I'm getting out of this is you spell out words to create skills, then you use the skills in battle. That's very unique. I might try this one too. I was very confused about the word part where you're spelling out words, but uh, it kind of makes sense now. You'll need to solve a number of word-based riddles oh, and puzzles. Oh no, puzzles. You'll also engage in conversation with a variety of weird and wonderful characters. I'm not good at puzzles. I'll be there along the way to keep the experience clean and family-friendly. Dong. <laughs> and who knows, maybe... You'll find out a little more than you I swear I'm an adult. For. I just laugh at things that children laugh at. That was a okay, fucking jump scare and a half. That's all I have time for. I'm very busy, you know. Dark magic doesn't just work itself. Remember to like, subscribe, put it on your list. Oh, wish, I know those publishers. That malarkey. I look forward to seeing you they published some pretty good indie games i'm not gonna soon. lie <laughs> fresh off the heels of their excellent interactive documentary on jordan mechner digital eclipse are back at it with another entry to their gold master series this time they're taking us deep into the world of a legendary game creator known the world over for his psychedelic arcade games psychedelic well arcade games and knitted jumpers making its world premiere this is Llama Soft. Your sweater looks Death so fucking comfy, story. dude. Like, I can appreciate a comfy sweater, and you were wearing a comfy looking one. Hopefully not too itchy. Hi, I'm Mike Micah, studio head of Digital Eclipse. I'm Mike I'm Micah. Chris Kohler, editorial director and of Digital Chris. Eclipse. And Chris. Look, Hubert's in the background. Believe and that oh, Dance Revolution, Mortal, 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 Mortal Kombat 3. And oh, they got some great games in the background the video there. video game itself is the best way to tell the stories of video game history. And that's why we launched the Gold Master series earlier this year with the making of Karataka. And we're here to talk about Lamasoft, the Jeff Minter story. And really, I can't think of anybody more deserving of this approach as, like for the Gold Master series than Jeff. The Jeff Minter story. What is this? Fill up one of my games. It's I was reading that, but I'm very slow at reading. Lamasoft, the Jeff Minter story is an interactive documentary. I think I've seen this. 
through design documents. Or I've seen something like photos, this, where it was an interactive documentary. Interviews. We will let you get inside this is the, the first game where I'm like, I don't know about that. All of these I said I don't know if the second game was for me, but then it won me over. They're going to have to win me over with this one, because it doesn't sound interesting to me, honestly. The I don't know who this person is reward, to watch their itself. documentary. That's the only thing. I mean, the, it, the journey should be the valuable part, not the conclusion. You don't just want to get to the end of the game, so I've, I've done that. I'll cross it off and put it aside. I want to go, you know, one of my games to be certain that people will come back to and think, oh, I'm going to play that. You may not get my high school. Okay, that looks kind of interesting, actually. Just because I really, really enjoy the experience. I didn't know what they meant by interactive documentary, but it looks like there's a lot of gameplay the mechanics. Of British video games, there's probably no name that stands out more than Jeff Minter. He's been around forever, but he's worked on so I, many games. I don't know who he is, I'm going to be honest Jeff with you. Jeff is just so well known for merging, like, challenging arcade shooter style gameplay Sheep with in space. Uh, just lots of farm animals. These games were before my time. Sheep in space, attack so. of the mutant camels, <laughs> metagalactic attack laws, of the mutant at camels. The of time, and it just it just gets weirder from there. I was thinking of a name for the software company. I'd written a little program on the Vic Twenty, which effectively let me draw on a little square. Is that yeah? I guess that's him. Like a, a little high rose design. I drew this little llama in there, and I wrote underneath it "Llama Soft" with three exclamation marks after it. That's what I'm going to call my software company. It's going to be called Llama Soft. It does sound interesting enough. He's also probably best known for Tempest 2000, which was a system seller for the Atari okay. Jaguar. Okay, Tempest 2000. Title. That game I know. That game I know. There's actually 42 <laughs> Llamasoft games included here from eight different platforms. I'm assuming these games came out. Yeah, Commodore 64, Commodore Atari. Yeah, that was before I was even born. Unreleased, uh, comics, multi I never played an Atari or so a Commodore 64, but I know some of the games that were on them. Of Attack of Mutant Camels for the Comics Multi System, which we're really excited about. I'm really excited about what that. What the heck? And we've also included uh, Grid Runner Remastered, which is a digital clips homage. Okay, so this is interactive, but it also includes the games that he made. That's really cool. So it's a bunch of games in one, technically, if you look at it that way. And you get to learn about this, He's been doing this developer. For 40 years. I don't think anybody else can compete with that. And there's so much rich information there for us to dive into. I think, I think this is already out, too. Jump in with us. We'll I remember really seeing this, and I'm like, what is that's this? That's why we're so excited Very to unique. finally release a game that's just celebrating the origins of Lamasoft. Drag queens have become the new superheroes. They're fierce and fashionable, and it's about freaking time they got their own fighting game. Enjoy Drag Her. Hi there. My name is Ian. Oh, I Here's think I heard of this one. Games. I think I've heard of this one. I'm here to talk to you about our debut title, Drag Her. Is that your name? I think I've heard of this one. Since the dawn of time, there has been... Drag! Was that a cell? <laughs> and... Wrong! It only took a few centuries, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Drag Her! Drag features real-life drag performers in all their camp queer kickassery. Third, duking it out to discover who the one true top is. And a one so is this a fighting game? You just hit her with a trash can. Dragger is a high-drama, effusively camp 2D fighting game that asks, what would a list game Mortal Kombat look like? And what's the LG? I didn't... Subtitles, you're failing me. Forgiving to play and fundamentally stupid to watch, Drago incorporates fast frenetic gameplay with all the dramatics of a drag performance. Look at those nails, dude. Just scratch them with the nails. Those are deadly. They just pulled out a trash can Anyone and hit them with it. Create a game that's easy to play with extra depth provided by Hilo mix-up, auto combos, and cinematic specials. Oh, someone was in a horse costume, I suppose. I thought it was an actual horse. They lied to me. The 
game also includes a 2v2 round robber mode. Not many characters, honestly. A single player arcade mode and assist characters. Assist characters, that's kind of like um, Smash. And Mortal Kombat, I think they do that too. Dreto has been heavily inspired by the classics, while also showcasing the best queer talent with the Get Our Grubby Paws on. The result is something really special. Sorry if I keep looking back, uh, my guinea pig Dracula Luna is going crazy back there, even though I held her for a bit. Or visit us online at dragco.game. We want to thank the Day of the Devs team for giving us an opportunity to showcase this. These uh, these so subtitles are kind of off sometimes. So I don't know what they're doing. Drag her is being death dropped onto you by Fighting Chance Games, a fistful of good duties who realize no oh, look at him. else is gonna do it, so they had to strap on. <laughs> I mean, strap it. I'll take you to our hammer. Strap on, strap it. We know you're thirsty. Is that on Steam today? So it's at uh, wishlist on Steam. At Day okay. The Devs, we love to spotlight games that innovate and push the industry forward. In 2008, when this game was first released, this game had a huge part to play. 2008. In skeptics that games could be art, and went on to become one of the most well-received games of the early indie scene. Now, 15 years later, this game is getting a lovingly crafted re-release, sporting 4K visuals and. Is this a remaster of an indie game? That's very unique. This is Braid. <gasps> Braid. Braid, Hi, good I'm game, Jonathan good Braid. game. I'm president of Tech. I would get this I remaster. Do a lot of programming and design when I can because that's what I enjoy the most. Here we're showing Braid Anniversary Edition, which is a remaster of the classic indie game Braid. Oh hell yeah! So all the games so far I would play. Literally every single one of these fucking games I will play. I will wishlist them. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. Can't fucking stop this me. game I'm is gonna a do it. platformer where you solve puzzles by I remember this game back on the like Xbox that. 360 arcade. Very early on you find out that this game is great. You can rewind and I can't wait. I cannot wait. Again. This I think this is the highlight for me right now. And then as you travel through the game from Even though I like literally everything, this might be the highlight. Not only can you always rewind, but that the behavior of time changes in each world that you visit. Give me more Xbox exactly 360 arcade indie are, titles, and I will say, have a fit. Uh, to spoil it, people who haven't played, but it's part. That of was the, like the pinnacle of gaming for me. Like the, the Xbox game. 360, I love that generation of gaming, especially the Xbox 360 arcade and all of those arcade game, arcade games that were on there. It was amazing. I hope you enjoy this remaster. We've been working. I will enjoy this remaster. I've been fan girling right now for a while, honestly. I don't know if you heard me, but I was definitely doing it. Great Anniversary Edition finally has a release date. Ooh. It's the classic puzzle adventure where you manipulate time. Is this going to be on everything? Repainted for modern this better be on everything. Many areas have been Put this on everything. More unique, and it's even more like a living painting with brushstrokes animating the world. There are more than nine pixels that for looks each so pixel good. in the original game. There are new animations, that looks so good. sound and music, a whole new world of puzzles to solve, and over 15 hours of commentary. And Sorry if I keep looking at my phone. Design, I need to do something at a specific art. time. We plan to make it the most detailed commentary in any game ever. So if you want to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. Art style's amazing. They the definitely improve the visuals a lot. My god. Okay, Windows, PlayStation, Xbox, Netflix. I keep forgetting that's an option for games. Uh, no switch. No switch. No switch. This next game is one no switch. we've all That's been weird. anticipating for a while. It's a narrative adventure road trip. They put it on Netflix, but not Switch. That's daughter. a little weird to me. We are so pleased to have this very special guest to help tell you more about it. Special hey guest. Hey there, I am Carrie Russell, and I'm thrilled to talk about Open Roads, a game about a single mother and her daughter embarking on a journey to uncover their family's shocking secrets. Tess, okay. Go down to the basement. There's something I want to show you. There's a lot of like. I voice Opal alongside the talented Caitlin Deaver, who voices my daughter Tess. Together we embark on a mesmerizing oh, road trip where mysteries and stories long buried come to life. There's a lot of wow. games this, in this showcase that have really beautiful right art styles, and they're all very different and unique, and I love it. Probably I love it. A year before he died. It's a game about revealing the truths we've been searching for as well as the profound bond between mother and daughter. Oh no, this is going to be a it's sad game. A dead end. We just have to get out and walk. And I'm going to play it and I'm going to get sad. I might cry. I think it's through here. Thanks for the help, by the way. 
Look, I know you're upset. We both are. Let's just get in, see what we can find and get out before I change my mind. Get ready for a heartfelt adventure. Like I'm gonna look way. around real quick because my guinea pig is throwing a fit. Hold on. In open roads. Luna. Hey, mom. Relax. I was thinking about something. I'll be over in a second. I wonder what grandma would say about all this. <laughs> Good question. What do you think? You can all hit the road in February 2024 when open this roads. This one has a month on and instead of just 2024. A lot of these games are like, we're coming out in 2024 sometime, which is fine, but I'm just pointing it out. Is she like a known voice actress? I don't, I've never, I don't remember her. Pardon you know my ignorance if I, landlord you had? I'm missing something you know, here. The one that, by and that one was also on Game Pass. There was two on Game Pass so far that I noticed. Left inexplicable stains and weird shrines in your room? Well, yeah, this is just like that. Experience this weird, inexplicable set of events and find out that Janet de Mornay is a slumlord and a witch. And a witch, Hi huh? Hi everyone, I'm Scott. And I'm Pete. Hi and Scott and Pete. And Ghost, a games making duo living and working on Gadigal Land, Sydney, Australia. And we're here today to talk about our upcoming game. Janet de Mornay is a slumlord and a witch. Okay. Wait, is that the name of the game? <laughs> is that literally the name of the game? <laughs> okay. Well, at least you know what you're getting, I suppose. It's a horror game? Oh god, that's loud. Hello. You turn that down. Hat, Andrew. Uh, I... Is that why you didn't let me in today? We want to make a horror game, and we just... It is a horror game, nice. So I'm it's definitely going to play this one. Renting. Yeah. It is set in a house that we used to live in, actually. So it has a lot of the things that we dealt with in there. So, black mold... Uh, faulty ovens. Ceilings falling in, floorboards rotting. Mmm, big cracks, flooding, all that stuff. So it's got all of that, albeit with a magical twist, because your landlord is a witch. Is that, do you just have a toilet in a, in a room? Where's the, where's the shower? Oh, is this a shared Janet bathroom? Janet is a firm believer in doing the maintenance work herself. So the house is barely being held together by magic. <gasps> oh, God. Jan this looks really good, sense. honestly. It's very unpredictable. And so a big part of I'm very interested in this one as well. Will be working out just I really do enjoy this. horror games, and this seems like something very unique. Great. The player will also have to interact with a lot of Janet-related memorabilia. Because she really, really wants you to know who she is. And her career as as Midday Television's premier lifestyle witch. Huh, interesting. Brought in for us today, Janet. I'm so I can't wait for people to see what you've brought us today. <sighs> well, I can tell you right now it's one of my favourite designs. A lot of the puzzles are based around her to work out how to operate her strange machines. What? What is that? What's going on there? <gasps> and just look like a face the up there because of the eyes. What exactly? Janet the little red circles look like eyes, and that thing looks like a mouth. Being terrorized by strange people around the house. What is that? Like, are they was that a naked man? A welcome hamper for me. There's a there's a big theme of queer found family. And we want to show that joy and that fun uh, that exists alongside the horrors. <laughs> He's so cute. The game's coming out, due to come out 2024. If you have a real rental horror story, 2024. please let us know. We're collecting more. Yes, absolutely. And please wish list on Steam and elsewhere. Um, and thank you, Day of the Devs, for so having us. So it's like a rental a horror game. game. Thanks, bye. Hello. Hello. Oh no, what the hell is that? Uh... Janet is a slumlord and a witch. 2024. Alright, yeah. Okay, you have my interest. Like True literally every other I game in this... couple nights in my neighborhood have been kind of creepy. Event. Sorry, uh, he started of talking. noises in the middle of the night. The other night, in fact, uh, my boyfriend and I were woken up at 5am to the sound of breaking glass. 
Don't know where it came from. We investigated for a while uh, with a flashlight, couldn't figure it out. This next game from a two-person dev out of Salt Lake City probes into just what might be lurking in your backyard in the middle of the night. This is a horror game? Hi, how's it going? That looks like the, the ventriloquist dummy from Goosebumps, the book series. Hello, this is David Johnson. That one right there. The one with the black hair. Lives. We're Night Signal Hi guys. And we're making Home Safety Hotline. Home Safety Hot. I, I think Markiplier played this one. I definitely saw this one before and it looks very fun. I want. I meant to play this one. Hi. I forgot to look it up. About the stability of my new home. Hi, I'm so sorry. My name is Grace, and it's probably nothing. Okay. Do you want to explain to me what the hell is happening? Home Safety Hotline is a text-based horror game about working at a 90s call center. I don't Your usually play text-based games, but this one looks very interesting. Or based on what I saw Markiplier play. And I meant to look it up, but I completely forgot. Thanks for reminding me. The entire game is presented through your state-of-the-art 1996 desktop work computer, where every day you'll boot up your machine, check your email. At least I think this is the same one. It might be different. Then Hold on. In to start taking calls. Let me see. It does look like it is, but I don't want to be wrong on this. I want to see it. There's a phone call. Of common household pets yep, and this is it. So I remember all those things orders. over there. And you have to decide what the problem is based on what the person says on the phone, terrible. and sometimes they don't really say much. Diagnose callers' problems accurately, or else let them suffer the consequences. Yep, this is the game. Okay. There's something in the basement. I've seen it. It's huge, almost as big as my dog. It doesn't hiss or growl or anything, but I haven't gotten close enough to it to find out what it is, since it's always just lurking out of sight from the top of the stairs. Place them on hold for as long as you need. A stair work. slug. As the game progresses, you'll unlock stranger and more horrifying entries, receive cryptic messages, uncover archived videos, and learn more about the enigmatic world of Home Safety Hotline. With the help of modern computer technology, today's scientists have been able to interpret the previously indecipherable squeaks of a smart mouse. Just don't piss off your supervisor. You don't want to know what the severance packages are like here. We've received complaints that some of the answers that you have been providing have been... inaccurate. Additionally, because we think horror should be for everyone, Home Safety Hotline includes several accessibility Interesting. Options, fear of spiders, fear of insects, fear of dark, fear of holes. Is that a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. ...of some of the most common phobias. So they... Home Safety Hotline is... ...try to help you if you have a phobia. ...to PC and other platforms. Wish other platforms, huh? Now. It's coming in 2024. They didn't say what the other platforms were. They said PC. That's it. And other platforms. Other platforms. Uh, Steam plus itch.io Q1 2024. Wishlist now. Is there a demo? Because I saw Markiplier play it, so I'm assuming there's a demo. I must pay for my sins. Wait. The not so distant future dreamed up by Long Way Home sees humanity's governments replaced with Long Way Home. That sounds familiar. States. Aster, a denizen outside of these walls, must secure a spot inside for their ailing mother. How do they do this? By participating in the extremely dangerous megacorp sponsor death races, of course. This is Resistor. My lord. Hello, I'm Gianni Matragrano, voice actor of the TV show host in the upcoming game Resistor. Resistor is a turbocharged, narrative-driven car PG inspired by a combination of classic arcade racing and adventure games. You play as Aster, a deeply customizable character. This looks really cool. Come in. And you get to customize your character fully. racer Eugene Aster. But after an unfortunate accident on the track suddenly takes his life, you swear off racing forever. Okay. Soon after, you're exiled from the corporate city and left to survive the wastes along with your ailing mother. But as her condition worsens... Why are we really doing this? I thought you hated racing. 
You'll have to break your one rule to try and save her. What's you your one rule? To get her into the city to find out what's wrong before it's too late. And win yourself a way back in. Who is going to walk away with this year's city? I think I've heard of this game actually. The the concept sounds very familiar, so I think I've heard of this one before. How's everyone enjoying the show? In this tournament, it's not just about who comes first. It's about who wins over the audience with style and character. Time your tricks to the beat of the music to earn bonus style points as the soundtrack adapts to the environment and your place. That sounds like a rhythm game. You're not the only one fighting for the podium. Many others have their reasons to win or even just to stop you. You'll need loyal friends and an adaptable ride to outclass them on and off the track. Explore the wastes in vehicle and on foot to build your reputation in small and large communities. Oh yeah? I bet you can't pull off a corkscrew like Turbo Taylor. If you do, we'll be your biggest fans. Objective complete. That was so awesome! Agreed. Did you know their dad is legendary racer Eugene Astor? Wow, really? Who's that? I don't know. Good question. They actually don't know who that is, and they brought it up. Deal with the Hold media up. through interviews. Your actions might even start having a wider impact than first expected, with interesting consequences. It's your story to tell, and we look forward to seeing it. I look forward to playing it. Title is from SFB Games, a small studio in London consisting of two brothers who've been making games together since they were teenagers. Twenty years later, they produced oodles of games, including my personal favorite, Snipper Clips. But the Snipper one Clips, I know that one. Enough of is Detective Grimoire, a murder mystery-themed point-and-click adventure series. The last entry to baffle sleuths everywhere was 2019's Tangle Tower, and here to make its world premiere is its sequel. Ah, a sequel to that game. I remember that game. World premiere. Hi, I'm Tom Vian. Technical Director at SFB Games. I'm Adam Vian, Creative Director at SFB Games. And I'm Catherine Unger, artist and long-time SFB guys. collaborator. You might have heard of our previous games. Snipperclips, I have. Tangle Tower, or I have. the recently released demo for Crow Country, which is also part of Day of the Devs this year. But today, we'd like to talk to you about a new game that we've been working on. It's a murder mystery detective adventure, and it's called The Mermaid's Tongue. Oh, oh, I know this one. I've seen this one on Twitter. This one looks really cool. I thought I was, but maybe not. Maybe this is my dream. It's not a dream. Hmm. That's exactly what Dream Grimoire would say. Detective Grimoire and Sally are back. There's something in the water. What is it? I don't know. But whatever it is, is the source of the green light. Beneath the waves, in the world's strangest submarine... Captain Magnus Mortuga has been killed. An old wooden boy with a face. This time around, every clue is a full 3D object. It's dark. Looks like the sun is trying to come out. I needn't have bothered. We're not going to be around to see it. Oh no. How come? Because we're going inside the submarine. Oh yeah. It's a big metal statue of a serpent. Uh, there is a cabinet built into it. But I think it's locked. The eccentric point crew all suspect each other, but when Grimoire and Sally arrive on the scene, the evidence points to a mysterious curse released from the darkest depths of the ocean. Motuga had locked himself in the room. It was later forced open, and the body was discovered. So Mortuga was alone in a locked room. A very small locked room. There really isn't anywhere for a murderer to hide. I'm not so sure. I think there is a hiding place. Where? What happened? Oh, that's interesting. So you picked the person, unlocked Magnus what, Mortina. and was unlocked. killed by Cold. what was inside. Was that's interesting. Inside. Okay, I like that. I'm guessing there was something pretty bad. You got to use your own brain, Look, Noggin. Mortuga died from a cut across his neck, not from some vague paranormal entity. Unless you're suggesting it was a vague paranormal entity with a knife. 
The Mermaid's Tongue is coming to consoles and Steam next year, but you can play a free, limited time 2024. demo on Steam right now. Steam. No, there's a demo out there. now, so I can play it Thanks right for now. This and very so could first you. look, and enjoy the rest of the show. So could you. There's nothing quite like sitting in a smoky jazz club, sipping a martini, just soaking in the tunes. And this next world premiere knows those pleasures oh so well. Another world premiere, huh? Hi, I'm Evan Anthony. And I'm Jeremy Abel from Feral Cat Den, a small studio in Brooklyn and the makers of Genesis Noir. We're excited to finally reveal our next Genesis project, Noir? I know that Nirvana game. Nirvana Noir. Nirvana Noir, so another noir game. Interesting. So they're staying within the same world, I'm assuming? Yeah, it looks like the, the same character right there. First one was fun. I think it did well. Really dig the art style. Nirvana Noir is an adventure and the noir game. Feel. The cosmic city. The noir feel. Sorry. Hard to say words sometimes. A place of bustling crowds, enticing storefronts, endless traffic, and alleyways that dissolve into celestial voids. You play ah. as a watchmaker named No Man. He is a character who faced an impossible decision and chose the impossible to live two lives. But a double life has consequences, and no man finds himself caught in a conspiracy that brings his split existence together in an explosion of color and crime. This game is like an acid trip. I've played it. it the, the first one, I mean. It was like an acid trip, and this one looks the same. I really dig the art style. It's very trippy, too. Dialogue-based detective work, where you must learn to speak other characters' language and read between the lines to uncover the truth. How short is the wholesome you snack if this is going on for this long? Jeez. tactile interactions and hunt for the clues within them. We're also extremely excited to share that we're working again with London-based music wizards, Skillbar. In Genesis Noir, you heard plenty of... What? Prepare yourself for a little... What? As well. As we navigate his dual existence, we guide our character deeper into the jazz-influenced film noir world established in the first game. Whilst simultaneously venturing into a parallel kaleidoscopic realm inspired by the acid tinged psychedelia of The Doors, Velvet Underground, and Pink Floyd. I can see that. We're going to launch a crowdfunding campaign because we want you to leave your mark on the project. Okay, so they're Follow doing crowdfunding this time. Noir.com. We'll be launching on Steam, Xbox, and Game Pass. Don't forget to wishlist Ooh, Game help Pass again. Thanks. I think the first one was on Game Pass too, if I'm not mistaken. It's like three or four Game Pass games now. Nirvana Noir. Coming soon. Also, Epic Games, Steam, Windows, yeah, okay. Before we wrap up, our friends at Ponkel, developer of Vampire Survivors, wanted to share a nice surprise with you. Oh. Uh, they're launching their Adventures update for free Oh, it's an update. Today, like a free update. Now, uh, on Steam and Xbox, Adventures follows the Survivors cast on a series of wacky side quests. They're self-contained mini story modes that reset and remix the game's content. Each adventure will offer a unique progression path Players can start from scratch and face custom challenges with a limited arsenal without losing precious unlocks in the main game. I thought each That's of the it. events would be an Thank hour each, but this one's going on like for pretty long, showcase, so the second one's going to be short. Isn't over. Day of the Devs isn't just digital. In fact, you can join us in Los Angeles on December 8th for our in-person celebration. Was that it? Where I you thought can we were going to more than 40 games. Did you just tell us the information about the today. Vampire Survivor thing and that was it? I thought we were going to talk to them or hear from them. Not talk to them, not talking to them because this is a screen, but hear from them. I know that game. That looks like it's gonna be amazing. Also, Scissor Reel.
Bits and Bobs. I like the name. Oh, there's Braid again. How'd they get in the scissor reel when they were talked about during the event? A lot of cool looking games in the scissor reel. Hey, you were in the event. Get out of the scissor reel. A lot of unique art styles in this event. Hey, get out of here. You were in the event. So were you. I think they're showing other games that weren't shown as well. But it looks like they're showing the ones that we already saw. Give, what? Give me toilet paper. I think I know this one too. I saw this one on Twitter. Yeah, Hermit Pig. So they're showing all the games that were in the event, plus some other ones. Horses. What the fuck is that? Is that for that? That thing? Or is it gonna be on Steam too? I forget what that thing's called. The thing with the crank that's like a handheld console. I don't know what it's called. But they showed it there. Simpler times. Is it a picture taking game? Oh, never mind. Was that Where's Waldo? Sorry, we're closed. Sulfur. That looks cool. Thank goodness you're here. Two strikes. That one's not. That wasn't in the event. That one was. Looks amazing. That, I played the demo of this game. This game's amazing. Go play it. Another one of these? Like Star Fox like games. And. Plus, we'll have some wacky alt control games made possible by our friends from We Throw Switches and Glum. Don't forget to RSVP for the in person celebration in Los Angeles. It's totally free. Or if you're in San Francisco in the springtime, come to the original live show. Just watch dayofthedevs.com for more news and information. Yeah, I'm not going to be over events. there. So Thank you so much to our generous sponsors, Day of the Devs, the digital broadcast, the in-person celebrations. None of it would be possible without their awesome contributions. So special shout-outs to Akapara Games, Annapurna Interactive. That's a lot of sponsors. Bozo, Idea Xbox, Fellow Traveler, Glum, Kepler Interactive, PlayStation, Ponkle, Razer, We Throw Switches, Steam. And an extra special thanks to Jeff Keeley and the Game Awards for teaming up with us to shine a spotlight on all of these wonderful indies. We can't forget our musical buddies, Dose One. You've been hearing his beats all throughout the broadcast. He's been with us providing music ever since we started doing these digital shows. And Scientific for that excellent pre-show. Check out Oxen Free 2 out now on Netflix. And don't fret, Day of the I forgot will be Oxen back Free 2 is on Netflix. With lots more surprises. Stay tuned for wholesome snack featuring lots of cozy indies. I will. Immediately following Day of the Devs. Thank you oh, to I will. all the developers who brought and shared their games. And thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you don't think that we've changed now that we've gone Hollywood. I still don't have an agent and I can never can, but we are still. Day of the Devs. Wait, there's one what? more surprise what? What? from our friends at We're not Marvel. done. It's a world exclusive, and you are not expecting this. Check it out. What? World exclusive? This looks cool. I didn't expect a one more thing moment, honestly. They showed a lot. Every single game I've seen, I want to play. I'm going to have to look back through this and find them all and wishlist them. What is this, though? 
Oh, Among Us. What? It's Among Us. What crossover? Who's who are who are they? Among Us really be crossing over with every indie out there. Or are they is Among Us going into a game rather than someone going into a no, never mind, hold on. What? Vampire Survivors? With Among Us? That was an interesting way to end it, but both those games are very popular. So that was Day of the Devs. That was really good. I really enjoyed all those games. Hopefully you found something you enjoyed as well, because holy crap, that was really good. That was a very, a very good, good showcase. showcase. They, they showed, showed off a lot of games, of games and they had, they had that scissor reel at the end. end. They, they showed, showed off a few more, more that, that, weren't necessarily that weren't necessarily in the show, but I think they're at their in-person in event. event. So, so yeah, I had, I had a good time. It was great. great. And I'm also gonna react to the wholesome snack, which is in this video. It's a lot shorter, apparently. Looks like maybe only 30 minutes? 40 minutes? I can't math, but anyway. Yeah, that was good. Uh, hopefully you uh, like this video and you'll come back for my reactions to the Wholesome Snack event. And I might do something with the Game Awards, but I don't know. That's a long event. I might just react to the winners of that. But we'll see. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Watch my Wholesome Snack react video as well. Okay? Please, 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 please. Thank, thank you. you, thank, thank you. you. Bye, Bye now. now.